Hi everybody and welcome to the first tutorial for our new section. Uh, we're going to be just looking at our first objective which is to find the composite function given various other functions. So we're actually jumped into chapter 4 now. We're in 4.1 if you need to reference that in the textbook. Um, when we're given any two functions, we'll just call them f and g, the composite function has this symbol, f of g of x. Okay, This is not an O. It does not spell out fog. <laughs> yeah, This is a symbol for a composite function, f of g of x. And that's exactly how we would read that, f of g of x. That's how you read that. Now, this is the official symbol, but some people find it easier to see the symbol as this. This ultimately means f of g of x. Basically, we're going to be picking up the entire g of x function and using that as the input into the f of x function. Um, some people will use, since we've got double sets of parentheses, they'll use um, a bracket, and it'll look like this. Any one of these three symbols means exactly the same, but understand that this is most likely how I'm going to be presenting the problems to you, f of g of x. Okay. We're going to come and talk about domain in the second tutorial, so let's skip over to uh, work some of these problems. I've given you two problems, I've given you, or two um, functions, f of x and g of x. f of x is this quadratic and g of x is this line. Let's first start by plugging in some numbers and figuring out our composite functions. So this is f of g of 2. Again, if it helps you to rewrite the problem or rewrite that symbol into something that looks like this, by all means, please do that. I want you to have success with this. So hopefully you, um, you, you realize what we're going to do first. We are going to work inside out. The first function I'm focusing my eyes on is the g function, and I need to figure out what g of 2 is. So since the g function is up here, I'm simply going to plug a 2 into that. That's it. So g of 2 is going to be 4 times 2 minus, or excuse me, plus 1. So g of 2 is simply 9. So what this function used to be was f of g of 2. Now what it becomes is f of 9. If I figure out that g of 2 is equal to 9, then 9 comes and takes the place of g of 2. So really, I'm just talking about f of 9. And now I'm talking about a different function, which is the f function, and I'm going to plug a 9 into that. So 2 times 9 squared minus 3. So that's, uh, what, 2 times 81 minus 3, which is 162 minus 3, which is 159. Ultimately, my final answer is 159. f of g of 2 equals 159. If we look at our second example, now we're talking about g of f of 2. It um, is the exact uh, reverse of f of g of 2. It's g of f of 2. So um, some people might think that we get the same number, but that's not going to be true, not necessarily. Um, the first thing I'm looking at is uh, what f of 2 is. So I'm going to look at what f of 2 is, and I'm going to use the f function and plug a 2 in. So this is going to be 2 times 2 squared minus 3. So 2 times 2 squared minus 3, and that is equal to 2 times 4 minus 3, which is 8 minus 3, which is 5. Okay, great. So this is um, what f of 2 is. So g of f of 2 simply becomes now g of 5. I can scratch out the f of 2 and put a 5 in its place, and now I'm talking about g of 5. g of 5, of course, now we're using a different color and a different uh, function. We're going to just plug a 5 into here. 4 times 5 plus 1, so that's 21. So ultimately, g of f of 2 is equal to 21. Okay, what if I say f of f of negative 1? Well, that's not a problem, that's fine, we're just using the f function twice. If you want to rewrite it, f of f of negative 1, great. The first thing we're going to look for is what is f of negative 1? So we're going to plug a negative 1 into our f function. So this is 2 times negative 1 squared minus 3, 
which equals 2 times 1 minus 3, which actually is, interestingly enough, equal to negative 1. So we plugged in a negative 1, and we got out a negative 1. That's interesting. So now we plug the negative 1 back in here, and we're talking about f of negative 1 again. But actually, we just know we just did that. f of negative 1 equals negative 1, so we get another negative 1 out there. So f of f of negative 1 actually yields a negative 1 as the output. In fact, we could do f of f of f of f of f of f of negative 1. It does, actually doesn't matter, because every time we plug a negative 1 into the f function, we keep spitting out another negative 1 that we would then plug into the next one and spit out another negative 1, and so on and so forth. So you can see the composition of these functions, hopefully. I don't want anybody to make the mistake. I see, I see some students do this, so I might as well just point this out. When you've done all this work and you get down to the, your final answer of negative 1, I don't want anybody to say, okay, so that means that f of x equals negative 1. That doesn't make any sense. f of x does not equal negative 1. f of x equals 2x squared minus 3. Nothing's changing that. f of negative 1 might equal negative 1. Okay, so please don't get all the way down there and then just do um, a little hiccup with a wrong notation here, because I will, obviously, I will find that, and I will not like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's continue with the same functions. I still have f of x and g of x. They're still the same. Now let's talk about g of g of 2. We did f of f of something. Now let's do g of g of something. Um, when we did the f of f of negative 1, we saw that it was the same thing as negative 1. So maybe you might think, oh, g of g of 2 would equal to 2. Well, I don't know. I don't know it until I actually compute it. So let's figure out what g of 2 is first. g of 2 is 4 times 2 plus 1 g of 2 is equal to uh, 8 plus 1, which is 9. Okay, and when I plug a 9 back into the g function, I'm talking about g of 9 now. Now it's going to be 4 times 9 plus 1. It doesn't look like it's going to be equal to 2. Uh, it looks like it equals 37. g of g of 2 is equal to 37. So we're plugging into the first function, and then we get an answer, and then we plug that into the next function. In fact, let me challenge you. How about g of g of g of g of 2? I want to know what that's equal to. Anybody that can come to class with the correct solution to this, I'll put a sticker on your notes. So why don't you calculate that and show me in class. Don't tell anybody else. Okay, so that's it with numbers. What if I just have my variable, f of g of x? Okay, so now we're just going to have an expression with x's in it. It's still the same exact idea. The first thing I need to figure out is what is g of x? Well, g of x is pretty easy to find because that's actually given up top here. g of x is 4x plus 1. I'm not plugging a number into this, so I'm not actually going to figure out what this number is. It's just this binomial expression, 4x plus 1. And now that I know what g of x is, I'm going to plug g of x, that entire binomial, into the f function. So now this becomes f of 4x plus 1. An entire binomial is going to be replaced with this x, or this x is going to go away and that binomial is going to take its place. So now this becomes 2 times, it used to be an x, but now it's going to be this entire input 4x plus 1 squared minus 3. So that's what f of the g of x function will be equal to. Now we have a little bit of work to do here because we have to FOIL that um, binomial. So I'm going to maybe write that side by side so I can see my pattern. I'm going to leave that 2 alone for a little bit. I see that I get 16x squared. I know when I FOIL the same binomial, the inner and outer terms actually just double. So 4x and another 4x makes 8x. And then my last terms make a 1. Now I'm going to choose to distribute this in. So I get 32x squared plus 16x plus 2, and then the minus 3. And then I can combine these like terms. And I've got 32x squared plus 16x. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. That's it. It's just an expression. 
It's just an expression that still has x's in it because the composite function uh, started with an x in it. So we get this trinomial in the end. All right. Let's go backwards. Instead of f of g, let's do g of f. Same exact thing, g of f of x. If you'd rather write the symbol like that, that's fine. I'm going to replace f of x with what f of x actually is. And f of x is the function 2x squared minus 3. So I'm talking about g of that. I'm going to plug that entire function into the g, this entire binomial into the g. And the g says to take 4 times my input and then add 1 to it. 4 inputs plus 1. That's what it says right here. 4 inputs plus 1. My input just happens to be an entire binomial. So this is just a quick little distribution. I've got 8x squared minus 12 and then plus 1 and then I can combine these of course. 8x squared minus 11. So we can do composite functions with numbers and get a number as our final answer, or we can do composite functions with variables and have some expression that has that variable in it. So let's look at our final example. I've given you two new functions, j of x and k of x. These are rational functions because they are fractions. So I'm going to make sure we know how to deal with fractions with our composition. Let's look at part a, j of k of x. Or if you'd rather write it as j of k of x like this, that would be fine. So we're going to take the entire k of x function and put it into the j function. So this entire fraction is going to input right in here for this little x in the j function. The j function says take 1 and divide it by an input plus 2. So here's 1 divided by an input, which happens to be the entire k of x function, plus 2. So once we do that, we now have a complex fraction. A complex fraction is a fraction that has tinier fractions in it. So there are various ways to uh, simplify a complex fraction. I think that the easiest way to simplify is to find the LCD. Look at all of the tiny fractions inside your main fraction, and then look at their denominators. Whatever denominators you see, we're going to multiply everything by them. I actually only see one denominator of significance. The other two denominators are just ones. So I'm going to take this x minus 1, and I'm going to say, OK, that's my LCD. And I'm going to multiply all three tiny fractions that I see by that LCD. So I'm going to multiply by x minus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 1. I have to do it to all three parts. Now, the whole point of doing that, of course, is that this will cancel away in this one little fraction. My main fraction bar is right here. And let's see what I get. 1 times x minus 1, of course, is just x minus 1. In my denominator, this fraction, the factor canceled away, so I just have a 4. And then this positive 2 is going to distribute here and here. So 2 times x, 2x, and 2 times negative 1, negative 2. Now we just have some like terms here in the denominator. So let's make my equal sign here. And here's my main fraction. x minus 1, of course, is still up in the numerator. 4 minus 2 is 2. I'm going to put the 2x first, because I like the variables to be first. 4 minus 2, again, is positive 2. And we're finished. We simplified that complex fraction to a single fraction. Let's look at part b, j of j of x. So that means that we're going to take the j function and plug it into itself. So if we want to write it as j of j of x, that's absolutely fine if that helps. So the j function, again, is 1 divided by the input plus 2. So our main fraction is 1 divided by something plus 2. Our something happens to be the entire j function again, which is 1 divided by an input plus 2. So we have 1 divided by the j function plus 2. Again, we have a complex fraction, and we're going to need to deal with that because that is not simplified. You cannot have tiny fractions inside bigger fractions. I'm going to use the same method. I'm going to find the LCD. And really, again, there's really only one significant denominator, this x plus 2. So that's going to be my LCD. I'm going to take that LCD. I'm going to put it in parentheses and multiply it to each of the parts of my complex fraction. 
Again, the whole point of doing that is to cancel away the denominator that you see. My main fraction bar is right here. My numerator becomes 1 times x plus 1, excuse me, 1 times x plus 2, which is x plus 2. This part of the fraction becomes just a 1. And then this positive 2 is going to distribute again 2 times x and 2 times 2. I have my like terms to deal with. x plus 2, of course, is not changing. But the denominator, again, I'm going to put the, the part with the variable first. 1 plus 4 is 5. And I am finished. Thanks for watching this tutorial, especially how to deal with complex fractions, and we'll see you in class. See ya.